this way, ladies and gentlemen, and see how the hand is quicker than the eye. As far back as history goes, we find that conjuring and magic tricks have always fascinated human beings of all ages and of all classes. Little boys and big boys, young boys and old boys with long whiskers, even little girls, stare wide-eyed at a magician when he is performing tricks. Watch this Arab faker now and see if your eyes are as quick as his hand. Here he is, right out in the open, where he can't have any trap doors or mirrors or trained confederates to help him. I tell you, he's got to be good. Now, how on earth did he get all those flags into his mouth at the same time? <laughs> you tell me. You know, I think they ought to send him to the Geneva to do some ballyhooing for the League of Nations. Say, his mouth must be like the subway. Always room for one more. I thought it was Now what's he up to? Oh, I see. He's showing us how to reduce the high cost of living by getting eggs without having to buy them from the grocer. I call it unfair competition, I do. This is a good trick. Watch it closely. The magician pulls out yards and yards of cotton string and breaks it into many, many little pieces. Then he sets all these pieces on fire. To make them burn faster, he blows on them. Well, I guess that's the end of that string, all right. Hmm. That's what you think, he says. For the string is in one piece again, and it doesn't show any trace of the fire. Believe me, that's some trick. But look. It isn't finished yet. When a magician rattles a box and plays a tune on his magic flute, there is sure something doing. Well, of all things, that string is burning again and right in his mouth too. Say, let's give him a hand. Now, if any bright little boy in the audience can figure out how this trick is done, I wish you would write to me about it. I saw the trick several times when I was in India, but I never could guess the answer. But perhaps you're better at guessing than I am. Anyway, it's a fine trick. But these fakers are not all alike. Here we have a fine-looking Hindu trying to attract our attention by a few simpler tricks. The bag seems to be empty all right, doesn't it? And yet he draws an egg out of it. And now the egg is a coin. Say, did you ever see a coin walk up a hill before? Well, there it is. But the bird trick is his best trick. It's the most puzzling trick I ever saw. Watch him very closely now. The basket is empty. His sleeves are rolled up. He tosses the toy bird up in the air and then pounds it good and plenty with his fist. The cloth has nothing fastened to it on either side. After all, he's sitting right on the ground in the courtyard of our hotel with just a plain piece of matting spread before him. What can he be fussing with under that cloth? And we begin to wonder what's happened to the toy bird. Well, can you beat it? A whole flock of birds, and they're alive too. Oh yes, very much alive. But when the magician calls, back they come. That's another mystery that I was never able to solve. There is no monkey business about this trick. It's all goat. And it just shows how clever a goat can be when a man has the patience to train it. I wonder if a man would keep his patience if some slick circus fella tried to get his goat. And now the most famous trick of all, the mango trick. The faker shows us a mango seed. He places it in a little pile of dirt. And he waves his magic wand in circles. 
Then he covers the little pile of dirt with a cloth and jabbers a lot of hocus pocus dominus or something like that. This is one of the most popular tricks in the East. Every traveler to India has seen it and been mystified, just as I was. It's always performed in the open air without the help of any apparatus. And when the cloth is removed, we have a live fresh young mango plant, 18 inches high, roots and all. Explain that one if you can. <laughs> I can't. There is no deception in this trick. It's just one of the many examples of the extent to which a faker will torture himself to make a living. This man has developed his eye muscles to such a degree that he can lift a stone, and I mean quite a heavy stone, with his eyes by inserting a small disc under each eyelid. Oh, it's easy enough to see how he does it, but it's hard to understand how he bears it. Well, 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 the old shell game, the oldest conjuring trick in the world. The hand is quicker than the eye. This trick was used thousands of years ago to entertain and mystify the Egyptians. The ancient Greeks and the Romans fell for it. All the nations of the world know it now. In our country, it has worked at circuses and at county fairs. We all know how it's done, but the performer is so quick in his motions that we are usually fooled when we try to guess under which cup the dice or the pellets are to be found. Many of us have bet money on the issue, but most of us have lost. This faker is quite the smoothest and fastest actor I've ever seen. I watched him many times just for the sport of it. I made all kinds of bets with myself, but I always lost. No review of oriental conjuring tricks would be complete without including the ever-present snake charmer. The snake charmers have chosen the most dangerous of all the poison snakes, the king cobra. One little sting, and a man would have about 50 seconds to live. How do they do it? Who knows? Maybe it's hypnotism, or maybe the snakes react to the sound of the flute. Anyhow, it's a grand show. And so with an eye full of magic and an ear full of weird music, we're going home to see if we can figure it all out.